Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Back today again with us is the esteemed honorable former ambassador from Israel to the United States, Danny Ayalone. He's also been at the United Nations. He was an emissary in Panama. He was deputy foreign minister. He was a member of Knesset. And Danny Ayalone is the founder of The Truth About Israel. Welcome back, Danny. Thank you. Thank you. And you forgot one, I would say the most, uh, the something which I am most uh, proud of is a friend of Barry Nussbaum. This should be also <laughs> particular. Tada <laughs> Rabat. So a few days after his inauguration as the United States 46th president, Joe Biden, Biden vowed to reopen the Palestine Liberation Organization's diplomatic mission in Washington. But I guess he didn't know the United States Congress had passed a law saying, and this was signed by President Trump, that the PLA, PLO, sorry, and the Palestinian Authority are liable for some $600 million in penalties against them that have been awarded in US courts. So in addition, he wants a new consulate for the Palestinians in Jerusalem. Doesn't all this change in policy coming out of the Biden administration undo the good work of the Trump administration that limited PA terror operations, both inside Israel and elsewhere? Well, I hope not. You know, we are, we are still at the onset of the administration. So there is still a lot of room to, uh, to uh, let's say, steer right the, the helm to the right direction. But uh, I would say that uh, for the last uh, four years of President Trump, terrorism was at its lowest. So I think uh, we all should look and take a, uh, a page from uh, Trump's uh, policies because they were very effective. And when you, uh, you, know, you, you face bullies, only deterrence uh, works. And uh, if you just uh, are trying to appease them, uh, it just stiffens them and it encourages them to even do more harm and terror. We've seen it throughout history, including modern history. Well, speaking of encouraging the bully, uh, you and I have spoken about this before, Danny. The Taylor Force Act, which was a, is a United States law in effect now, passed overwhelmingly, as you know, in the Senate and the House and signed by President Trump. It was named after a late US Army officer who was knifed to death by a Palestinian terrorist in Israel when he was on vacation. Um, that act limits uh, the amount of aid or funding that can go to the Palestinians until such time as they cut off terror funding, meaning no more pay for slay, no more paying Arabs to kill Jews, blow up buses, walk into restaurants with suicide bombs. Do you think the Taylor Force Act will remain in place? And do you think it will be uh, able to prevent more terror coming from the PA in spite of these new policies from Joe Biden? Well, I hope it stays. I think it's the moral thing to do. And I think also it's the right thing from a strategic point of view, if, if we really want to, to uh, lower the, the terrorist level to, to, to minimum. And as, I, as we mentioned here, Barry, uh, last four years, terror was at, at really at the minimum. The problem with this uh, uh, pay to slay, it's a legislation. I'm not concerned about the American legislation. I hope it will hold. I'm concerned about the Palestinian legislation where there is a tariff uh, on uh, killing Jews and uh, the, the money that the PA pays to uh, terrorists or if they are killed in their terror act, they, they give it to, the, uh, to their families. And the more, the more Jews they kill, the sum goes up. So this is the encouragement, and this is the, the, the signal from the Palestinian Authority of Abbas. Now, the money that they are paying to these terrorists are not their money. As you mentioned, it's American money, it's European money. And um, I, I do hope that the, whole, the, the, the law of Congress, uh, which is, I believe, the, the law of the land, 
will prevail. Boy, do I ever. Um, speaking of Israel and areas under PA control, um, across the um, old green line from the armistice of 19, uh, 1940s when the, the War of Independence ended, uh, Jews call that area Judea and Samaria, and they've been part of the Jewish homeland for several thousand years, and they were originally given to the Jewish state until Jordan conquered it uh, during the War of Independence uh, in the 40s. Uh, those West Bank settlements that are there are little towns. Some of them are bigger towns. I've been to num a number of them. For the first time in many years, the State Department is now calling them, get this, occupied territory, territory, contrary to what the Trump administration called it, which was part of, part of greater Israel, um, Judea, and Samaria. Is this reversal in American foreign policy where Biden went back to the good old days of, we don't really like Israel that much, i.e., the Obama administration, as outrageous to you as it is to me, I'm really bothered by this. Yes, it is. And uh, Barry, I think that uh, it was uh, President Carter who first, uh, you know, uh, coined this uh, term, this infamous term of uh, illegal uh, settlements. Uh, how can you uh, be considered um, illegally building your own homes on your own territory? This is something which boggles the mind. And, um, and again, it's a political decision. It is trying to um, uh, prejudge any settlement or any uh, final uh, uh, agreement to be achieved with the Palestinians. I would say that, uh, and, and again, historically, um, archeologically, every inch you dig, in Judea and Samaria, you can find a rich culture, 4,000 years of rich Jewish culture. So how can you say it's, it's, it's illegal when Israel is there? And when Jordan is, a, is an occupier, when the Palestinians or whoever, you know that this land uh, for the last, uh, let's say 2,000 years was occupied by many great powers or not so uh, great powers, none of them called it home. They were all occupiers, um, even Jordan, uh, the Ottoman Empire, you know, uh, supposedly Jerusalem is very, very uh, uh, sacred, according to the Palestinians, to Islam. Never, they had a chance of hundreds of years of occupation. Never did they consider it as a holy city or certainly they didn't make it their, their capital. Uh, so this is really a, a travesty. This is really a... Um, um, I would say uh, a, a political uh, means to try to delegitimize Israel and, uh, and Israel's, uh, um, I would say, right to the land. I would say, if you want to be fair, and let's say that I am not uh, objective about it, okay, but if you want to be fair from uh, the standpoint of uh, international law, the most you can call it areas under dispute, disputed land, until there is a, a, a final settlement. Well said. And Danny, again, thank you for coming on with ATP Report today. We sure appreciate it. For those of you out there, please go to The Truth About Israel. It's on the web. You'll find fascinating historical insights. Danny explains all the issues facing the Jewish state and its relationship with not only the Middle East, but the United States as well. And for those of you that haven't yet subscribed to our text alert system, please take out your cell phone and send the message truth in the subject down below and then send it to the number 88202, push send. You'll be signed up for free. You'll get all of our reports, including everything from Danny I alone on your cell phone, absolutely for free. So for Danny, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thanks for joining us on ATP report.